Okay. Um, thanks for having me. And I uh, hope you've had a good day so far. Uh, my name is Chris. Um, I'm the market accessory lead at JP Morgan. Um, I'm also responsible for the high performance computing platform that um, we run within the markets organization, um, which is used to power a bunch of our businesses. Um, I got the QR codes here for GitHub and LinkedIn if you want to connect, um, either you know, here or later, it's totally fine. Um, I'm going to talk today about um, a lot of operational considerations when you're supporting HPC or other GPU type uh, workloads in Kubernetes. And what I want to start, because just to make sure the room's level set, um, I'm a site reliability engineer. So reliability to me is really kind of a, what I call a declarative engineering practice, meaning that I want to always have the state of you know, my customer's happiness in mind whenever whatever I'm doing. Um, and that is you know, much like Kubernetes being a declarative system, right? Um, you know, it's working to always maintain that desired state. And I always think that site reliability engineering is that practice. Um, so take that in mind as we're going through the, uh, the slides today. A lot of talk about Kubernetes in general, and if you think of its origins, um, you know, it was a lot of websites, a lot of APIs, a lot of different types of microservices, microservices architectures, and so forth. Um, it led to us looking at you know, customer happiness or customer expectations with a different set of service level objectives. We often focused on availability, latency, error rates, and so forth. Um, often what you see in the Google SRE book. But with HPC AI, it's a little bit different because the workloads are different. Oftentimes you're submitting a task or you're submitting, you're training a model. Um, they're long running jobs and you know, you know, or you're rendering graphics or doing quantitative analysis. Um, but those processes have a beginning and an end. And sometimes the time delta between those is pretty long. So you wanna make sure availability, saturation, duration, and freshness, which is a term to say is your data stale, um, is, is super important when it comes to HPC and AI workloads that you're running on Kubernetes. Underneath the hood, it's largely the same. Um, but how we operate or how we think of what I call day two operations um, in, in HPC AI clusters is vastly different. And it poses a lot of questions. For example, are your GPU nodes in your cluster ready to take on tasks to completion um, because of the way the nature of those workloads are? You know, if it dies in the middle, you have to start that task all over again. Um, and that can add to a lot of performance problems, can also add to a lot of cleanup <laughs> Take, if you have kind of intermediary data stores and things like that. Um, another challenge is, you know, with vanilla um, Kubernetes, the kube scheduler has, it can't filter and score nodes for GPU workload placement because it's not scoring anything off of that, um, off that capacity of the GPUs. Um, CPU and memory is fine, but it does not have that out of the box today. So you're kind of left with two options, right? One is a custom scheduler, um, and you write that, and there's been some great examples of that today so far with some of these talks. Um, or you do something that we're gonna talk about in a little bit around node problem detector, which is a recent, um, relatively recent um, addition to how we determine the health and readiness of nodes in your Kubernetes cluster and how we can apply it to GPUs. Lastly, and this is more you know, beyond Kubernetes, um, is your upstream data, what you're sending to train a model or what you're sending to run a Monte Carlo simulation or something like that, um, is that equally as available as your Kubernetes cluster? So that's something that you need to have those conversations with you know, your upstream customers, your data scientists or your engineers or, or others that are um, sending that because it's all great to have a, a compute cluster ready to go, super resilient, but if that client data is not there, you can't really do anything. Um, and more or less, you're wasting money. Next, we're gonna talk about capacity and scheduling. Um, we did touch a little bit on the kube scheduler before, but how, how often are your GPUs busy or overworked? We talked a lot about even with you know, splitting of workloads or you know, splitting up GPUs. Um, you know, but they, they still have a single bandwidth of power, capacity, um, temperature. Um, 
do you want to send a workload to a GPU that's overworked or cooked? Um, maybe not, because you run that risk of it failing um, and then having to start that over. You know, if they are, you know, or you have scaling challenges or you want to run more tasks in parallel, um, and we talked, we heard some discussions earlier about, you know, how hard it is to get GPUs. Do we look at things about, you know, scheduling? Um, Q, which is one of the newer projects, has some really interesting insights in that area, and um, it kind of is effective a throttle. It allows the GPUs to finish the work that they're doing without, you know, uh, crowding each other. But, um, but that's another option you have. Uh, additional capacity, uh, uh, do you have it in your, the zone region data center, you know, whether you're running bare metal or with one of the cloud providers? Um, is it available should you need it? Do you need to reserve it? Um, and then if so, what's your plan to provision it? It's one thing to have it, it's another to get it up and running and then start whatever critical workload you have to, um, continue, to continue processing or have your business run. Uh, and then on top of that, can it be automated? You know, the best run books are the ones that are in code. Um, and then lastly, how can we prevent GPU workloads from starving others? This is typically handled with, if you're running kind of a, a mixed cluster of general compute and GPU, um, you know, you can get away with this with some node labeling and affinity rules and things like that. Um, but, you know, if, you know, if that's not the case or you haven't done that, how do you, how do you avoid you know, clashing or taking out critical services um, that are running on, on those nodes that, um, you know, make the cluster work. Lastly is resiliency. Um, are you prepared to fill over? Uh, and, you know, is, you know, typically with the scarcity of GPUs, um, you know, in, in particular, I'll talk about NVIDIA, but with CUDA, you can, for, to most of an extent, change the card underneath. So if you need to change like the instance type in Amazon, for example, as long as you're using CUDA, it's largely okay unless you're using specific features. And if you fall into that bucket, you might wanna to talk to your cloud provider about making sure they have the same card in a, in a, um, in a different uh, availability zone or different region, whatever you need. Um, and what's the plan for restarting tasks once you fail over? So I think that these are all kind of common questions that Unfortunately, sometimes happen is they, you know, get answered in the, in the middle of an incident, which is never great. So we're going to take a use case because we talked about a lot about um, telemetry and observability, and we're going to talk about vanilla Kubernetes and what it provides out of the box. Um, right now, you, this is kind of a very common screen for a lot of folks. Describe a node, you look at the node conditions. Um, these are the ones you, you get with a base installation. Um, this one's from uh, K0S. Now we have something called Node Problem Detector, which extends the capability of us to add checks. Um, you know, and this, in some of the cloud providers, is a standard offering now. I believe GKE and I think um, uh, Azure's Kubernetes offering also has it. Um, but also, I mean, you can see kernel deadlock, read-only file system, um, Docker overlay, things like that. But what's missing from here is that we don't have a way to check the readiness or the health of a GPU node in Kubernetes. So let's go get some, get some metrics and let's put these checks in. Um, so I'm gonna, this is the DCGM exporter. Uh, you, know, you can get that through the GPU operator with NVIDIA. You can also get, uh, you can install it standalone if you'd like as well, um, depending on how your cluster setup or flavor of Kubernetes you're running. Um, and this is going to expose a lot of metrics, uh, in particular ones that we care about when it comes to GPU health and, and so forth. And it will scrape those metrics into Prometheus and then Grafana, you know, the typical stack that most uh, operators and SREs like to have. Uh, and then there's kind of an example of one there running off my, my home lab. And then what we can do with no, with no problem detector is create a custom plugin that will check those metrics in Prometheus and give us ideas of whether the GPU is healthy or not. So this kind of is one of the, uh, this is just a, a snippet of the JSON file. I've kind of cut it down for brevity, but this is one of the custom plugin checks you get with no problem de detector that you can just add. And the result is, is that you get additional checks here when you describe the node. And 
depending on how these processes run. Um, you know, you can have GPU healthy with a readiness check, um, check temperature, and then also check pressure. Now, what you get out of this too is that when, you know, we talked about scheduling earlier, um, this is one way to at least kind of cheat the scheduler a little bit. So if a GPU is not healthy, then you know, it will go into a not ready state and that will prevent the scheduler from sending another workload to that, whether you have affinity rules or anything like that, but this will prevent that, um, which you know, in, depending on your risk tolerance for you know, how hot a GPU could get or something like that, depending on how you're set up, um, this will help prevent the risk of you know, a task crashing in the middle for, for whatever reason and having to rerun it. So that covers observability. Um, however, you know, metrics are just kind of a single entity in the whole spectrum of how we support this cluster. Um, I take it as you know, a good metaphor to it is, is if you think of a hospital with a ton of technology, there's so much data and metrics there. You still need doctors and nurses who not only know, you know the human anatomy, but also know the patient and be able to be able to support those types of um, scenarios where they need to intervene or they need to give medicine or things like that. Similar with this. You know, you can tell me the GPU's hot, but if I've never worked with the GPU before or I've never done anything with it, um, I'm not gonna know what to do. And so that's, that's one of the key things there. Um, so how do we get to that point of, you know, knowing your patient in this, in this scenario? Um, load testing is one way. Um, you know, understand the limits of your system, fix them, and then do it again. Um, you know, and part of that is, is how quickly can we get new infrastructure online if you have kind of spiky incoming requests that could happen. Um, what's the, per what's the you know, first points of failure and then address them? Um, and another good thing here is you know, when you have incidents, um, you can, you know, for especially ones that are kind of load-based or kind of you know, have latent issues that are triggered from load, uh, this is a great way to kind of validate any changes that you come up with through a retrospective that you have with your team um, after you've restored service. Uh, second, chaos testing. I know that's kind of a very buzzword term, um, but the best way to learn how to support your HPC cluster is to break it. That doesn't, that's regardless of Kubernetes or anything else. Um, and also what, what plays a critical role here is tabletop exercises. You know, when we talked earlier about resiliency, you know, we can have everything written down, but once you're in the thick of an incident and you're trying to restore a cluster, whether it's HPC or not, um, you know, having that you know, muscle memory, if you will, of having done this before, having gone through it, um, it creates a lot more psychological safety and you actually perform a lot better under that stress to get that. So practice is really the key term there. Um, and this is especially good for when you have post-incident retrospectives that you have incidents that are process failures. You know, nobody knew what to do and you sat around hours trying to get a hold of somebody. Well, that's probably a good time to, to go, you know, Let's go break the system and fix it again. Let's go run through those tabletops and make that happen. Um, lastly, incident response. I met, kind of alluded to this before, but telemetry and alerts are only good if we can mobilize and restore. Um, alerts still need to be interpreted. Like I mentioned before with GPU temperature, I need to know what I need to, what I need to do from that. Um, muscle memory among operations teams. Um, but also what's really important is, is building understanding of the types of tasks and workloads that are um, coming into your cluster. It's like understanding your application. Uh, and as a matter of fact, SRE should be committing code anyway, so you sh you know, one way to learn it is to open a PR and help the team you know, with reliability objectives and things like that. Um, some kind of closing thoughts here, but uh, no matter how intelligent our systems are, um, the humans behind them will make or break a successful outcome. And you know, when you think of you know, whether it's AI and how smart we've seen some systems get, um, they still break. And there's still people getting paged and there's still people waking up and responding and restoring um, those, those incidents. Nothing is foolproof, nothing is 100%. Um, reliability is also a team sport. So I talked about it before, you know, obviously work with your software engineers, um, work with your data scientists, work with your quantitative analysis have them understand that reliability is a first class feature in, the, in whatever they're trying to do. 
because it will pay dividends for them in the long run. Um, Kubernetes can help, as we saw, with some upfront effort for HPC. We put a node problem detector in, and we were able to shortcome you know, uh, one of the uh, you know, many things that we have to do to support that cluster. Um, what I'd like to see in the future would be maybe some more uh, open standards around this. You know, have those checks by default with some sort of implementation around it. I know it's difficult because it's, you know, it's tough to be vendor neutral when you have really, you know, two main proprietary vendors in the space and you have a, a bunch of smaller ones. But um, I think having more of these open standards, it's not only going to help teams, you know, interpret, you know, differences between them, but also give us the ability, you know, GPU temperature is going to be the same across every card, right? So that's something we need to monitor, we need to think about. So I'd like to see us as a community move towards, you know, some more open standards around how we support GPUs and Kubernetes. And that's it. Um, uh, this was built in Reveal JS, um, if anyone was wondering. Um, it's a bit of a learning curve, but it seems to be <laughs> a, uh, a good ROI. Um, also, NVIDIA OSS, I think, you know, I believe they, um, you know, with BGCM and the GPU operator, I've seen a lot of growth in that area over the last uh, couple of months and years, especially as the AI space has been taking off. And lastly, just, you know, a quick shout out, CNCF LF staff, like, this is the biggest convention center in the U.S., and it's just, it, it's just, you know, it's a very complex, um, you know, thing to pull off, and I think they're doing a great job, so I just want to give them some, some shout out as well. So, uh, feedback, QR is there, and if not, I'll take questions. We have quite a bit of time for questions. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for the great presentation. Uh, we have enough time for questions. So there's a mic in the middle of the room, so feel free to, over there, I can also pass the mic around. I'm also happy to talk outside, too. Yeah. All right, it sounds like we can. Yep. Oh, yeah, there's one. Yeah, there's so you mentioned error budgets. Have you done anything with service level objectives for GPUs? Um, so you're looking for, so error budgets with service level objectives? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good one. Um, I think that availability SLOs, um, duration SLOs, you can obviously, you can use a lot of metrics, especially in the application stack to, or you know, the task, um, and, and put some telemetry around, you know, if a process is taking too long and we expect it to, complete around this, around this much time, um, things like that. We also have you know, common availability. Um, one of the other things we were looking at was adding some metrics here to say how many times did we fail scheduling um, so we can actually improve the cluster or maybe see some changes to, from an engineering perspective. Um, so, but definitely, I think SLOs and error budgets play a big part into this. Um, what I would say when constructing those is start at a customer and then end at the customer. So whatever that round trip is, that's what you want to, that's what you want to measure. Um, and the closer you get to the customer, the more accurate your SLO is. Thanks. Hello. Yeah, uh, nice talk here. So I have a question here. So when you said all this kind of uh, uh, SRE uh, maintenance here, it's kind of for the uh, private cloud or something, or, or like HPC cluster, but uh, what do you see like if we maintain it uh, in a public cloud? Like uh, any challenge? What, yeah, what so. would be different? Um, so the question was, you know, is, this, is it more about it, what, you know, this type of, uh, so if I go back, um, no problem detector, was that what you were, you were referring to? Yeah, also, yes. Like uh, in public cloud situation, we probably couldn't, uh, Reads to this information, right? Rather than the cust customer. Um, so, you, so in in like a public cloud environment, right? Um, you can still get at these checks. I think the challenge may be in, you know, overriding the custom configuration that maybe some cloud providers have. Um, that may be an interest. That's an interesting question. I think that we'd have to turn to, you know, folks that have, you know, because. There's two ways to deploy no problem detector. One is you just do it, you put deploy it standalone. Or 
there's typically an add-on that like like GKE has an add-on for it that's like baked into their their um, their offering. So I would check with the cloud provider to see how you can override some of those, um, or maybe there's a facility for you to supply some custom plugin checks that go into that as well. Um, but it, I think that it, what gets kind of tricky is is because it's a managed service. You know, whatever you override, if you kind of interfere with what they're trying to do and maintain their SLOs, it may get a little tricky. Okay, so, sound good. Thanks. You got it. Maybe I have a question also. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, two slides below. I think if you go down. Yep. Uh, in the GK in the GPU health, maybe it's the next one. Uh, this here. Yeah, here. I was curious because this is the node problem detector. So it's the node health. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have like a multi GPU node, uh, is this something that would still work? Because um, so, this is the node health, I guess. Yeah. So how I would. It would still work. I think where you would have the the, the secret would be in the in what the sh the script that you're executing. So you can kind of get flexible with how you want to look at that. You may want to say, well, you know, if you have multi G if you have like two GPUs on the node and one's good, one's not so great, um, you know, you can make a determination and say it's ready or it's not ready, depending on the type of workload and how much you know it's going to consume. So. Um, but I, I will say that I think that there probably is some work in heuristics around that that we could definitely take a look at for sure. I think this, the scope of how we initially built this out was a one-to-one -one with a note, with a single GPU on a node. Um, but that's definitely a, a good um, avenue to explore. And I think also when we start talking about splitting GPUs too, the custom checks are going to get a little tricky too. That's thank okay. a lot. Thank, thank you. you very much for the presentation and answering questions.